On the 16th of April 2021, NASA source selection statement chose Space Access Starship to once again enable humans to return to the Moon as part of its upcoming program. NASA's next chapter of human space exploration, called Artemis, has the task of not just going to the Moon to create a long-term human presence on and around it, but also to prepare for ever more complex human missions to Mars. In short, everything we must be able to do here, we must first to here. So, what will the Artemis mission look like? Everything is designed and tested with our most important element in mind, the astronaut. This is their deep space, human-rated spacecraft called Starship, built in a single integrated part. The crew compartment where the crew will live and work throughout the flight. The service module with life support system for the crew and its own engine and fuel reserves and two pairs of aerodynamic flaps to provide control for Starship upon its return journey post-mission. To accomplish the task of launching our crew and heavy payload, SpaceX is building a Starship launch system comprising of the Starship, which serve as its second stage and the first stage called Super Heavy. Altogether, this is the world's most powerful orbital launch system and it exceeds the legendary Saturn V of the Apollo era in numerous ways. Sitting on the launch pad, the entire Starship fully fueled weighs just over 10 million pounds, over 9 million of which is just the fuel. Once ignited, there is no stopping of what comes next. All 31 Raptor engines on the first stage come to life, thundering our crew upwards. Two minutes after liftoff, the Super Heavy separates and reignites to return to the launch pad. While the Starship ignites its Raptor engines for the next several minutes, placing Starship in a parking orbit around the Earth. Here the crew will then dock with the pre-stage orbital tanker to fill the Starship with enough propellant for the rest of the journey. With the go from the mission control, the crew reunites Starship's Raptor engines to leave Earth entirely. The exact timing of this maneuver is critical to reach a speed that can escape Earth's gravitational pull, but also to put Starship on a course that will intersect the moon days later. Once this burn is complete, the Starship engines are turned off and the crew aboard Starship will coast for the next several days towards all that awaits them at the moon. Approaching the moon, we see the fundamental differences between Artemis and Apollo. Instead of requiring Starship to serve as an expendable lunar command module or to carry a constrained lunar lander, the Artemis will take advantage of a different approach, pre-staging. Everything needed for lunar mission will be positioned in advance by commercial and international partners. This includes rover, science experiment, and human-rated systems on the surface. But it also includes a dedicated lunar station in orbit around the moon called SLSS. Here at this station, we can pre-stage a robust lunar lander and establish a strong communication relay. With its massive habitable area, SLSS can fit a dozen astronauts aboard for months on end, allowing multiple human missions on the moon at the same time, and enable ongoing science to be conducted even between human missions. SLSS is also capable of adjusting its orbit to allow access to every part of the moon, something the Apollo missions cannot do. But the real key in this approach is placing SLSS in a unique halo orbit to perfect the maneuvers needed for Mars mission. And with the growing list of commercial and international opportunities, SLSS makes the ideal hub between Earth and all that lies beyond. Returning to our crew at the approach station, the Starship must match the elliptical orbit of the station in order to successfully dock. Once on board, pre-selected crew members transfer to the lunar lander, while the assigned to station stay in orbit. The lunar lander system itself is built for three unique steps, descending from the halo orbit down to a low lunar orbit, descending from low lunar orbit to the surface, and once the lunar mission is complete, launching from the surface of the moon and ascending all the way back to the orbiting SLSS. Once back aboard the Starship and undocked from the station, the crew fired the Raptor engine once to break up the whole orbit and once again to slink the spacecraft around the moon, placing it on a multi-day trajectory back towards Earth. As they near the end of the journey, the Starship will then reorient itself so it will enter the atmosphere and hit shield first. Entering Earth's atmosphere at 25,000 miles per hour, the friction of air slows the Starship considerably while also subjecting it to a temperature of 5,000 degrees. With the Starship now at terminal velocity, its three Raptor engines then reignite, 
to reorient Starship and slow the spacecraft down further for its final touchdown at the landing zone. With each successful mission, Artemis ushers in the next wave of men and women to explore our moon. And proof that together, we are ready to go beyond.